Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this intrinsic webinar in our introduction to Abacus series. Uh, today, we'll be discussing linear dynamics analysis. Um, please, someone, uh, if you can hear me loud and clear, please drop me a, a note just so I know that uh, everything is working OK. Right, today we will be discussing uh, linear dynamic analysis. My name is Ben Kajo. I am a senior engineer for Intrinsys, and I've been involved in design and simulation applications engineering and project engineering for a number of years. Originally, I was a materials engineer. I was thrust into the deep end of simulation in my first job, and I've loved it ever since. Uh, today, I will be co-presenting with Dr. Tim Hunter, president of Wolfstar Technologies. Wolfstar products are part of the Samulia brand portfolio. Um, I'll just try and introduce you to Tim now. Hello, Ben. Thank you. Um, and yes, I'm, I'm very happy to join you, join you uh, on this presentation today. And I've, I'll be able to give a short overview of some of our products um, that uh, are available through Intrinsys. OK, I'm just having a little technical problem here. I just need to uh, ensure that you guys see the right screen, because you can all see my notes. So if you bear with me just a second. Right. OK. Today our subject is linear dynamics. Um, but before that, we'll just introduce you to Intrinsys as a, as a company. Uh, we've been established since 1998 as an engineering consultancy uh, using DAFA system products. Um, PLM consultancy uh, is a, a large part of our, our business alongside our engineering consultancy. So we're the UK's largest and best resource DAFO system partner at the moment. Uh, we employ at least 64 people in PLM, and our, in, our engineering consultancy uh, has 85 people. We have four offices um, in the UK and one in South Africa. Um, we're the number one DS partner, actually, for uh, that's our system products, both in the UK and in South Africa. So the PLM solutions which we can supply and build uh, include 3D, ex 3D experience, um, CATIA and ANOVIA, as well as Simulia, um, which we will be uh, delving into today. Uh, we are able to customize and to build bespoke solutions for whatever uh, PLM needs you might have. The consultancy side of the business has been running for a long time and uh, involves both um, implementation and project management, software development, as well as uh, technical engineering um, solutions. We try to specialize in difficult um, problems and to form long-term relationships with all of our uh, customers. Support, uh, we, have a train we offer training, and we have a help desk also. So on the design consultancy side, we have uh, the ability to take your ideas through, from concept right through to detailed design. Uh, we have a good understanding of materials and their processing, and we're able also to prototype. Structural analysis, analysis is uh, one of our strengths. Uh, we have a, a good team of uh, senior engineers here, including some doctorates, um, to uh, enable uh, structural analysis, either on a consulting basis or also for training. So our expertise um, really is over a number of industries, but um, some of our particular expertise are in press tool design, uh, styling, um, patent design and research, casting, uh, jigs and fixtures, vehicle installations, as you can see. But also, we have a, a strong representation in automotive and also in aerospace industries. 
So, why we're here today? To talk about uh, linear dynamic analysis in Abacus. So, the theory that we're going to go through um, not too heavily today. Um, as you can see, we will really give a, quite a light touch to the seminar so that anyone who is a new beginner may be able to uh, understand and and hopefully uh, gain enough confidence to continue um, what they've learned here on their own and to be able to start and do your own analyses. And so, of course, we won't be too heavy on the theory, but we'll give you all of the expertise that you actually need to begin a linear dynamic analysis and produce your own uh, analysis and results. So, why would one do linear dynamic analysis? Well, dynamic behavior is a common phenomenon both in nature and also in engineering. And it's a cause of both desired and unwanted responses in machines and structures. And so it's something which really does need to be uh, characterized quite fully. There is a need, therefore, to manage any loads that are not static. So when is a dynamic problem a problem, a dynamic one? A static analysis is uh, fine if we're only sufficient, if you're only interested in really understanding the long-term response of a structure to its applied load. And here is a real um, deciding factor on whether you have a dynamic problem. If the inertial forces resulting from your structural accelerations are significant, and if they are very of very short direct di duration, excuse me, then you have need to perform a dynamic analysis instead of a static one. So, how fast should a, a load changing change be in order for it to be considered dynamic? Well, sometimes loads, even large ones, can vary very slowly and so not actually produce very large inertial forces. And by inertial forces, I mean that force which is derived from the mass times the acceleration on your structure. Then the response can be considered quasi-static and the inertial forces, because they're small, can probably be ignored. A static analysis will then suffice to characterize your structure. And many people take as a rule of thumb, if the speed of your applied load is less than a tenth than the first modal of the first modal frequency of your structure, then you may consider it to be quasi-static and you may con continue your work with a static analysis rather than a dynamic one. Also, some loading, such as centrifugal loading and gravity loading, do produce large inertial loads. But they may be treated as static because they don't vary much with time. It's when inertial forces are large and also very rapidly with time that you really need to do a dynamic analysis. So when is a dynamic load considered to be linear? Well. If your finite element system is linear, then your dynamic load will be linear. So for example, if your materials are, material behavior in your model is only linear, if there's no contact and no nonlinear geometric effect, then you are really in the domain of a dynamic uh, linear analysis. For the, for the analysis to be um, accurate, if it's linear, the response that you expect from your structure should really be dominated by just a few frequencies. Externally light applied loads must be independent of the response of your structure. And any initial accelerations generated by any suddenly applied loads need to be able to be described accurately by as few modal frequencies as possible. And lastly, your system should not be heavily damped. If you meet these criteria, then you're able to continue your dynamic work with a linear dynamic analysis. So, in short, if stiffness and damping in a system are constant, 
then the dynamic response should be constant. And now here, here we have just a little theory, not much. But a dynamic solution is one in which the inertia forces are included in the dynamic equation of equilibrium. So here we have the inertia forces mass times acceleration plus the internal forces which are, are arrived due to the elastic um, um, stresses in the structure plus damping forces minus the applied forces, that should equal zero. So that is the equation of state, if you like, for a linear dynamic simulation. So if your internal forces and your applied forces, when taken from each other, equal zero, that is, you don't have any inertial forces, then you have a static analysis. But if your applied loads minus your uh, internal forces are near to zero, or not quite zero, then you have really a quasi-static um, analysis. And that may be uh, well treated with a static analysis. So the internal forces are made up of elastic and damping forces as we can see here. Now, damping is important uh, to uh, dynamic analyses and to linear dynamics also. But they can often be difficult to calculate. So what sort of response would you get from a linear dynamic analysis? What type of analyses can you produce? Well, given a dynamic load, if it is applied to the structure and then removed, then any vibration that is generated um, is, done, is generated really by the internal system forces only. So you deform a structure and then let it go, and the vibration is generated by uh, the internal forces being released. And that we call free vibration. Now, if the uh, load is applied continuously, and it may be harmonic, periodic, or aperiodic, then we expect to see uh, generated external loads um, on your structure from that continuous uh, applied uh, dynamic load. And if the periodic response, if that, that load is periodic or harmonic, then we should expect the response to be exactly the same frequency as the externally applied load. Again, damping is important. And there are various types of damping. We will come on to that a little later. And the role of damping is really to reduce the response of your structure. So what can you do with abacus to perform uh, linear dynamic analyses. In Abacus, uh, there are several um, uh, linear systems that can be analyzed with different procedures. Uh, first of all, we have eigenvalue extraction, which is normally the first thing you would do when trying to characterize a structure. The natural frequencies and the mode shape may be real or complex and still be linear. Um, but they should be considered to be characteristics if, of your structure. Just like your structure has materials and stiffnesses, it also has eigenvalues, which are characteristic of your particular structure. Uh, linear dynamics may be uh, completed in, within the time domain. And that's uh, transient analysis. And also, steady state response analysis, which is uh, linear dynamics conducted in the frequency domain. Response spectrum analysis is typically the type of analysis which gives you an estimate of a structure's response to peak loading. And typically, you would see that sort of loading done in earthquake type analyses. Often, um, structures don't have a harmonic um, input, 
load input, but a random one. And random response analysis is also available and is linear dynamic. Abacus is a very useful tool for conducting any type of dynamic analysis. So in Abacus, linear dynamic analyses are considered to be a perturbation. That is, the response from your dynamic loads are considered to be small responses about a preloaded base state. And, you, and uh, you can do a linear dynamic analysis even if your base state is not um, a linear analysis. So this means that uh, you can build up, if you like, a complete load history. And at any time during your loading history, you can do a perturbation analysis, extract modal frequencies, do a forced response, just to see how your structure will react to dynamic loads at the particular um, load state that is in, it is in. And then you can continue afterward to add yet more loading history onto your model. Building models for dynamic analyses. Practically all element types in Abacus can be involved in linear dynamic analysis. There are only a few really that um, have exclusions or can't be used. So axisymmetric elements with twist are not available to dynamic solutions. And with pizza electric elements, um, not all of the dynamic effects are available to the analyses. An important consideration is actually your model size <coughs> and your mesh definition when doing, modal when doing uh, linear dynamic analysis or any type of dynamic analysis. Particularly when your analysis is modal superposition, where the response is really governed by the summation of the, re of the response of individual modes, it is very important that in your structure, all of the modes can be properly represented in your mesh. So particularly at high frequencies, when mode shapes start to become complex, it is important that you have uh, a fine enough mesh to properly represent those modes. If you don't, then you will find inaccuracies um, coming into your work. So one of the things that you can do um, certainly if you have time to do it, is to produce a mesh, run your modal analysis, refine the mesh, and see how the modal frequencies change. If you see significant change, then you know that your initial analysis um, probably wasn't um, fine enough, or refined enough, I should say. Now we're going to have a look at modal analysis. This is really where all um, dynamic analyses begin. So the natural frequencies and mode shapes of a structure define really the dynamic properties of that particular structure. Abacus allows you to extract um, eigenvalues or mode shapes and mode vectors from um, your structure. And these may be either real where damping is not active and where your stiffness matrices and your, and your mass matrices must be symmetric, that is linear. But also complex eigenvalue extraction may be conducted. And that is typically what you would do um, when you have to take into account uh, viscous damping, for example, or if your matrix is unsymmetric. Um, a typical example would be if you needed to do a uh, whirl analysis or rotor whirl analysis, then you would use complex uh, eigenvalue extraction in order to see those effects. Uh, here we see a picture of the um, step module, the step uh, window where you would define uh, the eigen. The, uh, the modal extraction method that you wish to use for analysis. So there are a number of different um, solutions available, eigensolver solutions available within Abacus, and they're chosen really and defined really on the step, on the step module. So there are iterative methods, 
And Abacus includes Langtroff, uh, which is a very common um, model extraction uh, solution. And also subspace, subspace iteration. Both of these are really good for large models and particularly if you don't need to extract a large number of, uh, of mode shapes. Now, reduction methods have been in uh, Abacus for a little while now. Uh, so AMS, automatic multi-level substructuring. It is a very fast way of extracting large numbers of, uh, of, of eigenvalues from your structure of modes. And it's also very quick. So it's usually the recommended uh, method for for uh, eigen solving or for getting modal values out of your structure. So here is a typical example of an engine analysis. We have a million degrees of freedom, quarter of a million nearly elements, and a thousand modes extracted. And on one single core, uh, an AMS analysis took one and a half hours. Um, obviously, if you had more cores available, more CPUs, and also GPU processing available, then this type of analysis of this size would be very much quicker. And it's not unexpected that you would be able to do an analysis of this sort within a half an hour. So Abacus, and particular Abacus CA, CAE, are well set, well presented to model large structures and do uh, modal analysis and linear dynamic analysis on very large models. And the AMS uh, Eigen Solver is a very good facilitator of that type of analysis. So here we have a, um, an example of the process which we might use uh, to build a model for linear dynamic analysis you can build and assemble large models in Abacus CAE. Abacus CAE is a good tool for, for doing any type of Abacus analysis because it will actually support most of the majority of the keywords that are available um, for the different solutions within Abacus. It is also um, able to manipulate large models very easily. So the first thing you would do would be to import your your uh, geometry, build your mesh, and importantly, apply uh, your materials. So clearly, to do a dynamic analysis, you need to define the density of your material, because there must be a mass matrix. But you should also don't not forget that non-structural masses may be added to your model also. And this may be done discreetly or smeared over your model. Boundary conditions may be applied to the model. Or if your analysis is a perturbation in the middle of two steps, then the, the eigenvalue extraction and whatever linear dynamic solution you use after that will take on the boundary conditions of the previous uh, static step. So if a model doesn't have any boundary condi conditions, you may still run um, a, uh, a modal extraction, and such an analysis we call a free-free um, analysis. For those of you that still look at keywords, and are able to um, understand the deck, then this is what a, a frequency um, modal extraction looks like. So it is the frequency card that is used to extract, um, to, uh, to perform the modal extraction analysis. So this is what your deck would look like. OK. So there are some optional parameters, tick boxes, uh, for your analysis. Now, the value of the, any displacements for mode shapes or eigenvectors, as we call them, extracted from your frequency analysis are not immediately useful or meaningful. For each mode, the maximum displacement is actually normalized. And it may be done, done in two ways. 
it may, may be normalized to be the maximum unit length of your model. So for example, if your model is built in millimeters, then the maximum displacement that you will see in your eigenvectors, your mode shapes, will be one millimeter. Or it may be normalized with respect to mass. That is, your model is considered to be one kilogram in weight if your uh, structure, if your uh, model is in kilograms for mass, and the displacements will be in accordance with the shaking, really, of uh, one kilogram. So here, the model shapes, the model frequencies we have for uh, our little engine block. And these are the first 10 flexible modes of the structure. If it was free-free, a free-free model with no um, boundary conditions, these modes will be available also. They'll still be there, um, but they will start at number seven instead of, instead of one. And there will be six uh, rigid body uh, modes that will exist, exist for each of the six degrees of freedom um, in any system. So this is just a, a general picture of the type of post-processing that you can do with, with Abacus CAE. Um, the, the Abacus CAE visualization tool allows you to do many things and all, all of the type of uh, post-processing that is available to say static analyses are available here. Um, to dynamic analysis also, including animation and also producing videos such as AVI. So Abacus CAE is a good tool um, to do your visualization and it also allows you, Abacus CAE, to customize and produce um, additional results from your dynamic analyses. Now this is just a screenshot of the modal effective masses of a, of a typical eigenvalue extraction modal analysis. These, um, this data you can find in the DAT file on, in your scratch area. Wherever you ran your uh, analysis, there will be a DAT file there. And if you scroll through, you'll find many different tables with useful information which you can use to assess uh, your modal um, analyses. So for example, effective modal, analysis, modal mass allows you to see how much of the mass of any given structure is actually involved in a particular mode. This is quite an important tool for you if you want to decide whether a particular mode is having a large effect or maybe ignored and not treated in any, in any further redesign. And I guess as a rule of thumb, and many people use 5% um, modal mass as um, a determinant to see if a, modal, if a mode is significant or not to a structure. That is, if the, the mass in any particular direction for a particular mode is equal to or greater than 5% of the total mass in that particular direction or column, then you may consider that that mode is an important mode. Otherwise, you may uh, well be, you may well ignore it in your future um, design efforts. It is also important to note that if you sum all of the masses in each column, then you should, they should equate to the total mass of the system. Um, and particularly with a free-free analysis, they should sum nearly exactly. Now, as we go on to do a uh, forced response analysis, the number of modes that you extract in an eigenvalue analysis to continue into forced response becomes important. And you can look at this effective modal mass table and look at the sum of the modal masses in each direction and see how that compares to the mass of the structure. If it's way off, uh, then you know that you actually need to extract more modes in order to properly characterize your structure. 
And in a similar way, you will find modal participation factors also in the DAT file. And these may be, be interrogated to determine in which direction a, a particular mode is actually acting. So for example, you'll get some information which will tell you for it, if a mode is a torsional mode in the degree of freedom 6, for example, or if it's a bending mode in the degree of freedom 3. Sometimes the modes can look very similar or can be quite complex and it's hard to determine exactly um, how effective or what, um, in what direction those modes are effective. Now we talked about modal extraction and also the importance of extracting as many modes as is necessary to properly characterize your structure. And this is be important because in Abacus, most of the uh, linear dynamic analyses, response analyses, are, are based upon the principle of modal superposition. superposition. So in superposition, the response of each particular mode to the applied loading is summed to give a response, a general response of your, sub of your structure. So the more modes that you have uh, to effectively uh, characterize your particular structure, the better. Now, of course, we've already established that for linear dynamic analyses, really, it's, you shouldn't need too many uh, modes uh, to describe your structure. But certainly, if you're doing um, analyses such as acoustics, where most of, the, most of the interest is at higher frequencies, then it's important to ensure that you do extract a lot of modes. So modal superposition is the basis for most subsequent abacus linear dynamic analyses. So mode-based and subspace-based steady-state harmonic analysis or steady-state dynamics uses modal superposition. Mode-based transient response analysis relies on modal superposition. And response and random analyses also um, rely on it. And of course, if you're extracting a lot of modes as is necessary, to properly characterize your structure, you also have to ensure, as we've said before, that your mesh is fine enough or refined enough to properly map or describe each of those modes, particularly the complex ones at higher frequencies. Right, response analysis, abacus steady state dynamics. Now, when a damped structure is um, is loaded. Initially, it's at, res at rest, and when excited, there's an initial transient response, which is short and not generally of much interest. And the structure soon reaches a steady state condition that is characterized by the harmonic response with the same frequency as the applied harmonic loading. So response analysis is a very common type of analysis in, uh, in linear dynamics, and a very useful one. So in Abacus, in Abacus standard, a response analysis, steady state dynamics analysis is described as FSD. And you can really, I suppose, liken it to doing a, um, a sign sweep. If you imagine uh, sign sweep testing, that's really the type of um, characterization that you're doing with your structure. So there are a number of procedures for uh, steady state dynamics. Each solution will give you results that actually rep represent just a single cycle complete cycle of your uh, steady state um, input. And they will provide solutions for each excitation frequency. And each uh, solution is actually independent, uh, each frequency is independent of the other frequencies. 
So the excitation may be input in two parts. It may be input as a magnitude and also a phase angle, which allows you to uh, step the input or inputs, if you want, with respect to time. And the outputs, therefore, also um, are listed in magnitude and phase. And I guess you must um, also understand that because there is both magnitude and phase data that is coming out of a, a steady state analysis, then you will have about twice the input, or twice the output, sorry, data that you would have for, a, say, a static analysis. So three types of steady state dynamic procedures are available in Abacus. There is the direct solution in which the complete set of modal de degrees of freedom are solved at each frequency. And this type of solution doesn't need the eigen modes to be extracted. So there's no need to do a frequency step beforehand in order to extract your modal frequencies. So this solution is accurate, but is best for, uh, is really good for uh, nonlinear dynamic analyses. In subspace, subspace projection, equations of motion are projected onto subspace mode shapes and solved for the displacements. And you do need the eigen modes for this analysis. It's rather an old type of analysis and not often um, uh, used anymore. Now, modal superposition. That response is approximated by the superposition of the modal responses, as we've said before. And the modal, the modal equations are, in the linear solution, completely uncoupled. And eigenmodes are required. So before you do an SSD with modal superposition, you need to do an eigenfrequency extraction or a frequency solution beforehand. So the harmonic response of your structure in modal superposition is composed or calculated from your eigenmodes, the generalized masses, and also the modal damping. And it's, of course, it's best where your dynamic system remains linear, and also, again, when your structure may be described really by um, not too great a number of eigenmodes. Damping is very important for any steady state dynamic analysis. In fact, without damping, you will see that your responses uh, will, will go near infinite and not be realistic. So the quality of your analysis can depend to a large degree on your confidence in the damping values that you put into your model. So here we see just a quick screenshot of the analysis input. Uh, many load types may be used in the uh, response analysis. So, there, so loads may be uh, input as forces, pressures, or even body forces. And these loads are defined as real, that's in phase, and also imaginary or out of phase components. Abacus allows you to use, in a single step, multiple load cases for uh, steady state dynamics. And this means that you can run a number of load cases, which are all independent within a single step. And this is significantly faster than analyzing each of your particular load cases in a separate step. So is, there is that advantage uh, in Abacus for uh, steady state dynamics. Boundary conditions. So both the real and imaginary parts of a boundary condition of a degree of freedom are restrained or free simultaneously, it's not possible to have the real part, for example, uh, free and the imaginary part uh, restrained. You can't do that uh, in Abacus. Also, any non-zero displacement um, that which you might try to define will not be prescribed. It's important to remember, of course, that dynamic response analysis is a perturbation within Abacus. So you may have done a static step. And the static stiffness matrix is, forms the basis 
of the um, of the eigenvalue extraction and also the response analysis. And so boundary conditions may be taken from previous um, uh, steps to go forward into the dynamic analysis. Abacus also has the ability to to use to do base motion analysis or earthquake type um, analysis. A typical example might be, for example, if you had a large engine that was shaking the, an exhaust system, you might not want to model the whole engine and put the loading on it. So you can you can use a base motion to represent uh, the heavy engine. So here we see an example, just a quick example of a, a, a structure which might be used for steady state dynamics. There is a motor pump which is uh, mounted to a girder with an impeller overhanging and the motor is uh, the motor is considered rigid. The brackets are, are grounded and considered uh, welded onto the hull, a hull for example. Bolts are beams and we also have a, a cantilevered instrument panel which is just poking through the bottom of the structure. In order to characterize and build this model, we would ensure that all the materials have density and elastic properties. We'd ensure that the brackets or the pedestal bases are fixed. That's our boundary condition. The loading is a rotating force at the mass, at the rotor mass center, and that produces an, an imbalance. The rotating force has a unit magnitude in this case, and the motor rotational axis is aligned with the global x axis. And the rotating force also has uh, components in axis two and three. We are using a modal superposition method, for example, and we're defining effectively a, a frequency sweep from 5 to 250 hertz. So for example, if we wanted to characterize this structure properly up to 250 hertz, then we would need to extract modal frequencies in the eigenvalue step of at least one octave higher than 250 hertz. That is up to 500 hertz. We would extract in a modal frequency analysis before this, the, uh, the steady state dynamic step, all the modes up to 500 hertz. And many people do actually uh, two octaves and would extract modes up to um, 750 hertz. So the outputs here are going to include displacement, reaction forces, and, and, and uh, stresses. So this is a, a look at the uh, setup for the analysis. And the first step is the eigenvalue extraction or frequency extraction step. So we selected as, a, as, an, as the eigen solver, the Lanchos solver. Of course, the AMS solver would be much faster. Um, we've been asked to input the frequency range, which is between 5 and 500 hertz. Of course, we're only interested in the response up to 250, but need all of the eigenmodes up to 500 hertz. As an output, we want the reaction forces, stresses, and displacement. So step two is the steady state SS dynamic step, the SSD step. And here we input our frequency range. And we determine the scale for the output as linear in this case, but the output could also be defined uh, in, on a logarithmic scale. The bias that you see at the end of uh, uh, the sheet there, that determines how close to the modes your points, number of points that you're extracting data for, are to the actual modes. With a bias of one, there's no actual clustering 
of output data around the mode shape. This very important step is to apply damping. So damping may be applied directly to the modes in modal superposition or over a frequency range. And it's a critical damping ratio which we input. Okay, this is just our loading, uh, sorry, this is our, our loading, load creation uh, template. And here we can input our, our loads in different degrees of freedom. And that's quite a simple uh, form to understand there. And we input data on in, in uh, real and also in the imaginary um, boxes. And over on the uh, left here, we can see that this is really the, the full range, almost the full range of different load types which you can apply to a linear dynamic analysis. Output. Field output may be animated and animated on the actual display shape for a complete uh, response cycle. And derived field output may be computed and plotted as usual, in a, as it would be in a static analysis. So your MISES and Tresca stresses are available to you, as is your maximum and minimum principal stresses and strains, etc. If you're doing a base motion or a earthquake type analysis, then your response may be viewed with respect to the, your, to the relative displacement or the total displacement, which includes the movement of the base or the base motion. So that's really linear, in a nutshell, uh, linear uh, dynamics in, uh, in Abacus. But that really is just the beginning of um, the types of analyses that you can uh, compute within Abacus. Of course, there's much more available to you within uh, the nonlinear dynamic analysis uh, domain such as crash analysis in the explicit domain. But also, what you will find is that your eigenvalue extraction analysis and your steady state dynamic analyses are just the beginning of really characterizing your structure. They, they yield useful information in themselves, but the data that they produce may be post-processed and taken on into yet more sophisticated uh, solutions. So these results may be leveraged, for example, post-processing in programs such as EFI-SAFE, which is a fatigue program within the Simulia uh, brand, or also dynamic optimi optimization procedures in TOSCA or EyeSight optimizers. Or, of course, you may manipulate the data that you've output from your analyses with your own post-processing scripts and tools uh, which you can write in Python and which dovetail very nicely within the Abacus CAE environment. So one typical example of what you might want to do is uh, some acoustic analysis, which uses both eigenvalue and also uh, steady state dynamic analysis to post-process those results and allow you to see data such as sound power, which we see here radiating from an engine block. So the first step of all these, of this particular fairly sophisticated analysis, is the basic eigenvalue extraction step and also the steady state dynamic step. You will find that within the Samulia community, there are many tools which are available to allow you to actually continue your dynamic analyses and post-process uh, the results from these simple analyses, that is eigenvalue extraction and steady state dynamics, to produce different types of results. So the results that you see in this animation here were produced um, on a, by a script which was available 
in this familiar Abacus knowledge database. At this point now, I'd like to reintroduce Tim, Winter, Tim Winters, President of Wolf, Wolfstar Technologies, so that he may uh, talk to you and describe how his tools leverage the power of Abacus and also improve the post-processing in order to help you to further understand your structures in linear uh, dynamics. Well, uh, thank you, Ben. Um, and I'm going to try to make myself presenter and show my screen. And so can everybody see my screen? Ben, is that, is that working OK? Yep, that's fine. We can see. OK. All right. Well, thank you all again for uh, for taking the time to, to learn about linear dynamics. Ben did an excellent introduction to linear dynamics. Covered about two days worth of material in 45 minutes. So that's pretty that's pretty incredible. Uh, so just wanted to give you a quick introduction to some tools offered by Wolfstar Technologies. The, the main one we're going to talk about today is True LDE, which stands for Linear Dynamic Events. The tools from, from Wolfstar are True Load and True QSC. These are for understanding loads and restructures. So basically, we can turn any component into a load transducer and back calculate the loads. And then the third tool here is True LDE, which is really a post processor for Abacus linear dynamic events. So its, it's, it's, it's purpose in life is to, do, to be a very efficient post processor for doing these types of linear dynamic solves. Um, and I've had, our company's had a very strong relationship with, the, with FB Safe from the beginning. And all of our tools will output uh, decks ready to run in the FB Safe fatigue analysis. So you can take any of these, any of these types of uh, events and push them off to FB Safe for doing fatigue analysis. So very quickly then, uh, the, uh, the, the reason I created this uh, uh, LDE software, the, the true LDE software, Linear Dynamic Events, was really around issues that I ran into in doing linear dynamic results with Abacus uh, in my consulting business. So frankly, there's a lot of things that are going on in the linear, in the linear dynamic solve. Number one is when you're doing these uh, star mode dynamic solves, um, they, you can get very large storage requirements in your DB for saving field data. With every time step, every frequency uh, point, you're storing off data. And the way Abacus wants you to work is they want you to create star history requests before you do your solve. So you've got to know ahead of time what nodes and elements you're interested in to create a star history request before you do the solve to create any sort of plots. And then again, the solution times can be so slow largely because you're putting a large amount of data in the ODD with, this, with the field data storage. And again, once you've looked at the results, if you need to look at a new set of XY plots, you often need to go back in and do a new star history request and resubmit the data. And as, um, as Ben was pointing out, um, you can look in the DAT file to understand modal mass, but it's not but interpreting that modal math table in the DAT file is not obvious and not intuitive. And so, so you want to quickly understand your modal math participations. And there's just not a quick and easy way to do it in, in Abacus as it is. And while, true low, while, while Abacus does a proper handling of preload in the star frequency modal extraction step, when you're, when you're computing the eigenmodes, it's going to put in the the proper stress stiffening on the model and calculate the, the eigenvalues properly. When you're looking at the results on a star mode dynamic step, uh, on your event step, it's, it's, the results are basically in a stress-free state. So if you really want to understand the total stress on the model or the total stress on your XY plots, you need to do some extra work to do it. So, so the preload is not considered in your results in, in these event steps. So, you know, it's just not intuitive interface, and it's just not it's not the way we like to do things. It's really kind of batch mode oriented. So it, it ends up being a lot of frustration and then cause lots of problems. So this was my motivation here. Abacus does an excellent job with linear dynamics. They really do an excellent job here 
but there were some things in the looking at the results that were just uh, a little frustrating to me and that was a motivation for my team. So. so the basic concept around true LDE is this, is that we take we, we do a normal star frequency step. It's all for the modes and averages. But rather than just storing the mode shapes, I'm going to have you request uh, stress, strain, reaction force, output, and store those on the mode shapes. And then when we go to do the, the event step, whether it's a, a time domain, frequency domain, or random, random response, I'm going to have you only store the modal participation functions, or what Abacus calls generalized displacements how much each mode shape uh, participates in the solve. So these are very small amounts of information to be saved on the event step. They're just x, y functions. And then the, the LDE tool is simply going to just uh, is multiply and sum these together and do linear superposition on the fly so we can generate any, nodal, any data components of nodal functions we want, any data components of elemental functions we want, or create operating function shapes. So we can dynamically post-process the model by clicking and picking on the fly and get the information we need. And then if you want to go off to a tool like FDSafe to do FDA-based fatigue, um, the data is all set to go. And I'll basically output a macro to make it ready for you to do, to do your solutions in FDSafe. So this makes it a very convenient way to look at the model and iterate on your results. So here's a snapshot of what the, L, of what the LDE environment looks like. So um, here we've got uh, the, the main form in LDE. And you can see on the top here we've got the, uh, a modal ODB. So this is going to contain the, the, the step with the, mode shape, with the mode shapes in it, the star frequency step. And then there's a dynamic event step of ODB. So these could be the same ODB, or they could be different ones if you do a restart. And then you've got an, a step with the dynamic event, so, so this event step. In this case, we're doing a random PSD style response. And then um, if we want to include preload on the results, all we need to do is turn on the, 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 the include preload checkbox. And when we go off to FDSafe, since I'll push all the results out in the time domain, and since this is a random event, we'll need to, to send out multiple copies of that event, of, of this time domain signal to, to send out different time domain random events to FDSafe to do T calculations. So these all make it very easy to, to get out and do a very complex analysis here. And you can see the main form there is basically got a table of the percent modal masses. And so very quickly, you can inspect your, your uh, results and look at your percent modal mass in the structure and see which modes are important and turn on and off. So we're going to just show a quick export to FDSafe. So on the on the back left there, you can see the um, the PSD uh, for the for this event. Um, these are the generalized displacements for the PSDs. How much each mode shape is participating, and we're just going to go in and click on the FDSafe button and say we want to get 10 repeats of this time domain signal. And when we do this, uh, the true LDE product will generate a time domain version of these of these uh, generalized displacements. And each block, you see that there's 10 blocks here, each block obeys the PSD mathematics, and the entire block um, obeys the PSD mathematics. And then this time domain signal is set enough to be safe to do fatigue analysis. So it's a very, and, and then what you what you end up in it with FE safe is a macro, and you just run the macro, and everything's set to go. So, very quickly, important features with true LDE is that you get to include preload. You don't need to store uh, field results on the event step, only the generalized displacements. We support star mode dynamic, star steady state dynamic, and star random response. And all the interfaces to FE safe, it's in the time domain and it's in a ready to run macro, so you're all set to And um, just very quickly, the summary here. On the left, you can see a whole kind of shopping list of things that, that you get with the LDE versus doing it in native mode and abacus. Uh, but what's really important is the, the, block, the little uh, inset on the top right showing that when we take the same deck and set it up for LDE versus an abacus native setup, um, we end up running 95% faster with LDE 
and our storage requirements are 98% small. So this is just the power that you get when you leverage the information in an intelligent fashion and set things up for them. Okay, Ben, I think that's it. Thank you for your time, and uh, I know we're just right at the end of the hour here. So. Okay, thank you very much, Tim. Well, hello again, everyone. Um, we're about out of time, I'm afraid. Uh, if you do have some questions, some burning questions, then please do contact us at intrinsis.com. And we'll be pleased to, uh, to, to hear from you. If you found this, uh, this webinar useful or interesting, then please look out for more. Have a look at our blog at intrinsis.com slash blog. And you'll find tips and techniques there as well as um, dates for all our other webinars. And if you want to inquire about further training, uh, that's either here at our offices or even at your own place of work, then do contact us also again. If you're interested in Abacus, um, uh, then do also contact us for a demonstration and we'll see what we can uh, do for you. Or if you feel that you need uh, consultancy or an analysis help, then we are also here to help. Um, I'd like to thank Tim for his uh, introduction to Wolfstar products. And of course, you can find uh, Tim on uh, Wolfstar Technologies on the web. And you'll be able to contact him uh, there if you need anything uh, uh, from Wolfstar. So again, thank you very much for your time. And if you do have any questions, then please do drop us a line. And we'll see you again at the next webinar. Tim, are you still there? Yes, I am. Yes. Okay. Was that okay for you? Yes, that was great. That was that was great. I mean, it, we were both on a uh, on super fast speed, but yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, good. I think I think that went very well, and uh, and uh, we'll see how it was. It looks like you had about seventeen people on the call. So, yeah.